everybody. Grady Polson here, Family First Life. Excited to have my man Brent LeBlanc on here out of Boise, Idaho. He's, um, oh heck, I think that he's a five week veteran of uh, life insurance sales at Family First Life. First month, which was last month, he issued paid over $30,000. And the first week here in the new month, he has issued paid over 20,000 his first week. And when I talked to him last night, he told me he was disappointed on his week. And I said, what did you do? And he said, 12,000. And I said, this is a guy who I want to spend more time with because I like the way he thinks and talks. And so, Brent, excited to have you on here today. Excited to hear your story and excited to welcome you on. Everyone drop a uh, three in the comments below to show Brent some love. So tell me, buddy, how you doing today? Good. I'm excited to be here. Um, thank you for having me on. Thank you for that warm introduction. Um, just happy to be here and see how I can help. Awesome. Well, I'd love it if you would, um, you know, take it away for a little bit. Tell us you your background, how you found FFL. Uh, you know, it, you know, not everybody wakes up in the morning and goes, you know what? I want to call strangers and go over there and sell them stuff. And so, uh, I, <laughs> how, how did you find, uh, how'd you find us and, and, um, and love to hear, you know, a little bit more about yeah. you. Yeah, to be honest, um, I never would have thought in a million years I'd be selling life insurance. Um, I'm 34 years old. I was a fireman paramedic for about almost nine years. Um, I loved it until I didn't. You know, a few years into the, the fire service, I switched fire departments and just a lot of things changed. The culture wasn't really what I was expecting it to be. And um, you know, long story short, I decided it was best for me to just exit the fire service. Um, I didn't really know what I was going to do. Um, luckily, with COVID, uh, when I the year 2020 is when I left the fire service. And one positive thing out of COVID that happened for me was the department and city that I worked for, they were offering a, a severance package for guys that were uh, getting close to retirement. And although I wasn't close to retirement, I still qualified for it. And they gave me like a six month base pay uh, separation uh, uh, incentive. And so um, my wife and I, we were currently at that time living in Southern California. We have two boys. We wanted to get out of California just to raise our boys in a, in a different environment. Sure. And so I left the fire service, relocated out here in Boise, Idaho, where my wife's family's from. And um, I was living, my wife went back to work. I was living off of the, that uh, six month severance pay uh, just to get me by to figure out and buy me some time, you know, what I was going to do. And I came across, you know, I'm very passionate about helping people. Obviously, that's why I got into the fire service. Um, and I, so I still wanted to help people, but I'm passionate about like uh, men's health and, you know, happiness and just um, so on and so forth. So I decided to start an online coaching business for men. Uh, while, yeah, I did that for awesome. about, I did that for about five or six months. It was like a full transformation, like mind, body, spirit type thing. I created my own program. I had a little bit of success with it. Um, but I was doing it all organically Grady. So it was very, I wasn't paying for any like paid advertisement. And so it was very time consuming, meaning as far as prospecting for myself, doing sure. that coaching business, I was having to go on. Facebook groups and just message, you know, fathers and husbands and just um, try to get them into my coaching program. And I, I had a little bit of success, but it was just, I was on my phone staring at Facebook Messenger all day, every day, just talking to strangers. And uh, so I was kind of looking for a plan B or a backup in case I wasn't able to, to grow it. And I was looking on, uh, you know, one of these job websites and I came across a bunch of uh, different job opportunities. One of them was this life insurance uh, opportunity. And, and I filled out a request because uh, the, the information on there sounded pretty appealing. Um, so Al, Alvin Teague, my manager uh, over at Family First Life Grit, he actually reached out to me and I told him my situation. And he kind of just spelled it all out for me, the opportunity here, um, not only in just life insurance industry, but specifically here at Family First Life. Um, and because I didn't have, I didn't, I was never in the life insurance industry. I didn't know about other insurance companies, about like the commission and, and how all that worked. And so when he explained it to me um, over the phone, you know, he definitely had my interest then. And so that's when I started doing my due diligence on, you know, who is this Family First Life? And 
you know, just with a simple search, I mean, just tons of content and just success stories after success stories. And it was to the point, honestly, Grady, where it was like too, too, it sounded too good to be true for me. You know, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I don't want to say a victim, but I've, I've been a part of that shiny object syndrome, you know, where everybody's doing it and, you know, I buy into it and it's not what it makes out to be. So I was a little skeptical, but I did my due diligence and, um, you know, I, I had a good feeling about family first life. And so, uh, Al told me as long as you have a great attitude, a great work ethic, and you're coachable, which, you know, those three things are probably my best attributes. I, I was like, he told me, if you have those three things, you, you can really make your own success and, and, um, you know, create, create something good here. So, I went in full board. Um, I think he he got me set up with uh, getting licensed, right? And um, you know, after talking in, to him, and um, he said, "Give yourself about two weeks to go through the training to pass your state licensing exam." Well, I said, "Why two weeks when I, I'm going to try to do it in one week?" And I did. So I, I did my training in one week. I spent all day studying the videos. I went to take my test. Honestly. Uh, during the test, I didn't think I was going to pass, but I finished it and I passed it. So I was like, sweet. Um, so then I went on to contracting, uh, you know, that the contracting, I believe if, if I'm not wrong, Grady, uh, I was told it was going to take about a week or two to get the majority of my contracts with the carriers. Um, a couple of them took about a week or two. There was a couple others that took a little bit longer, but you know, I, I, I got the bare minimum amount of carriers that I needed to get contracted with just so I could start in the field. And, um, oh, before I move forward, while I was waiting to get contracted with all these carriers, you know, I took advantage of that time and dove into the boot camp training. I was plugging into the podcast training, just like all the training videos say, plug into the system, be coachable, um, just try to try to absorb as much information you can from these top producers. The training's free. So like, why wouldn't I, set myself up for success to, to come swinging right out the gates. And so that's what I did. Um, you know, after I, I hit the field, um, my first week, uh, the, well, let me backtrack my first dial day. I've never, I've never called on the phones. I was a fireman paramedic, you know, so I have good people skills, but my phone skills sucked. Um, but I plugged into the system. I kept, you know, I kept the right mindset moving forward and just, uh, critiqued, 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 you know, every, every hang up or, you know, where I would get tongue tied, I would pause for a second, try to reflect back on why, what happened, why that happened. And then just try to do better next time. That's all, that's all you can really do is, is put forth the, your best effort, try to learn from your mistakes and uh, get better every day. And so my dial, my first dial day, it was rough. I did set a few appointments. Um, the thing that really changed things around for me as far as dial days go, Grady, um, I remember you mentioning something about phone burner. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I looked into phone burner for a little bit. I believe they gave me like a three day trial or something for free. And honestly, uh, that just that that changes the game for me as far as dial day goes, because, you know, I'm, I'm now able to make twice as many phone calls in half the time. And not only that, but, you know, their platform, it, it's so user friendly. Um, you know, I, I kind of use it as my uh, CRM in a way, because I import all my leads that I buy from our CRM into my phone burner. And I have all these different folders of new leads, older leads, um, you know, made contact with the point with the person, but didn't submit a, an application or submitted an application. You know, I, I just have it all organized. And you can write notes on each on each uh, contact. So phone burner has been a game changer for me. Um, sorry, am I, I'm kind of I feel like I'm rambling right now. You're but, doing great. Uh, no, don't stop. Just keep going. You're this. Is, they they want to hear from you, not me. I promise you that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, phone burner has been a game changer as far as um, um, my dialing, and you know. I, I wanted to give myself, I, I'm, I'm a former athlete, former fireman, you know, I'm very competitive. I like to win. I like to succeed. And, you know, I think anybody who's uh, competitive knows that 
you, you got to do everything you can to, to be successful. And how I did that here at Family First Life is I just modeled and copy and pasted what all these other top producers are doing. And yeah, I've critiqued it a little bit here that kind of fits me and my personality. Um, that's what's cool about this, this whole industry and being a life insurance agent here at Family First Life. But honestly, it, it's the free training here um, that is, you know, top class training, I believe. I mean, it's, it's it, the proof is in the pudding. It, it's working. And that all I've been doing is following the system, following the training and, and stuff like that. But, you know, one thing that really, I think, helped me out of the gate was, you know, taking that, that leap in faith um, and spending all that money on leads to begin with, you know, uh, you guys just mentioned it, bet on yourself and give yourself the best chance of success. I mean, really, um, this is a, a great business opportunity. We're not just life agents, but this could turn into a, a business opportunity. And so that's how I started treating it as, um, you know, not just an investment in my business, but it's really an investment in my personal, personal life, because what I do here today in Family First Life and, you know, going out there and protecting families, it's great that we get to serve all these people and I'm honored to do it, but it's even better to get rewarded for it so I can provide for my family and my two kids. And um, yeah, I just, I'm seven weeks in, uh, maybe almost eight weeks in. And um, it's fun. it's weird that I'm sitting here, honestly, because I've I've watched all your trainings. I've watched these podcasts um, um, just to learn, you know, and digest everything. And then I'm asked to be on here like two days ago. And I, I honestly I don't feel like I should be here because I'm so new. I'm, I'm learning. But um, let this just be a an example that if you have a great attitude, you're not afraid uh, to get kicked in the teeth every once in a while and pick yourself back up and keep pushing forward and you have a great work ethic and you're coachable, anybody can do this. And, and I mean anybody. I'm not special. Uh, I, I was a blue collar fireman. Um, you know, I don't I don't have a college degree. Um, I'm just uh, my attitude, my work ethic. I'm coachable. And, you know, I. I like to serve and help people and, and everything's been going good so far. Brent, you're a, you're a, not only a, a great insurance producer, but you're a tremendous human, man. That was, that was powerful. And your belief in yourself and your, your, you know, at times when it can be hard um, is why you're sitting here today, because you've gone out there and in seven weeks, you've knocked out 50,000 issue paid and you, you've got two little reasons at home and probably one big reason at home who it runs, who tells you to get back to work like mine tells me to get back to work. And so that was referring to the wives, but um, yeah. <laughs> people go, people go, does FFL have really good training? Like how good is, like, you guys sure you, because we got really good training over here. And I'm like, well, we have all of the top producers. There's no one who sells more life insurance in the United States of America than at Family First Life. So if we have all the top producers and they're the ones training you how to sell life insurance, would you hypothesize we've got good training? People go, okay, that makes sense. So, dude, so to hear your journey from a new, you know, old old job, new business to getting licensed. I mean, this this is a story unlike most other people's. But the differentiating factor is that we've got heck six thousand people that are contracted to our agency, and a thousand that wrote a policy last month. Is the fact that five thousand of them didn't go out and do what you did. They didn't decide to push through when it got hard. They didn't decide to seek out tools like phone burner. They didn't decide to seek out coaching from a great mentor like Al. I've worked with them for almost three years. I love Al. And, and to put themselves in a position where they can now take care of their family at a level different than ever thought possible. What, what would you, I mean, just work ethic, all those things, but what was that, what pushed you so hard to do it and not go get another job or do something else or pursue your other business? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't want to go back and, and work for somebody, um, especially in today's, you know, what's going on with today with COVID and just, you know, all these mandates and requirements that, you know, are really against kind of where my beliefs are. And I just didn't want to have to deal with any of that. And, you know, one of the reasons, um, and don't get me wrong, the fire service is great. There's there's a ton of great firemen out there. Some of my best friends today are still firemen. 
But one of the things that really uh, bothered me about the fire service is that I have two young boys, they're eight and six now. And being a fireman, it's a, it's a huge commitment to serve. And, you know, firemen spend a lot of time at the fire station. And I missed out on a, a lot of special occasions, holidays, you know, with my boys when they were young, you know, missing Christmas morning, you know, when they run out to see what Santa brought them and stuff like that. You know, those are, those are times that really, um, you know, I won't get back. Um, and and I, I'm not here to talk negatively on, on that subject because I'm, I'm, I'm really not that type of person, but um, the ability the ability to be able to work and create my own schedule um, and, and create the, the amount of income that I want to create based on, based on my results and how I produce, um, that is really, um, I think, what drives me every day. And knowing that you know, my success, my, my ability to provide for my family every day is, is going to fall on those three things, um, my work ethic, my attitude and my coachability so I can get better every day to, so I can produce more and serve more and provide more for my family. I mean, so did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, it did. I mean, you just, you, you wanted the ability to decide. You yeah. wanted the ability to decide and not have to be, if you don't work the, the Christmas Eve, Christmas morning shift, you're going to be fired, right? Yeah. That's, that's a very yeah. stressful place to be to go, honey, I'm sorry, I can't get it off. No one else will take this shift. Yeah. They have kids too. It's my year to take it. Yeah. My wife was a nurse and it was every three, you had, to, it was like nine holidays and she had to pick three every three years. And that that's just the way it was. It was these, yeah. which three do you want to work this year? And I remember her having to work, uh, New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, and Thanksgiving one year. And it was brutal, right? Yeah. But it was we got it all of the way that year. And then the next two years we had, we got to, she picked like St. Patrick's Day, Easter, and like, you know, Columbus Day or something. And how those got yeah. equal, equal treatment to uh, Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. But I know what yeah. you're talking about is it's, it's, but now she doesn't have to do that. Now you don't have to do that because you've chosen to start a business that you own and can work as hard as you want up until the 23rd and yeah. if you want to, and you hit 57,000 issue paid, which a guy like you probably will, then you take off the 24th through the second. Why? You know, yeah. because you did what you did your job and got to work and yeah. hit your numbers and allowed yourself to be, to discipline yourself based on your minimums and not on your feelings. And when you yeah. do that and you're being now great examples to your boys is that like the conversations I'm sure you have with your boys is daddy's got to go to work or daddy's run, run, running our business now. It's yeah. far different. Like it's, I, that's how I talk to my kids. I'm like, so what yep. business do you want to start? What do you want to do? What do you want to create? What do you do, dad? I solve problems for people. I to help people. Yeah. Okay. You know, and that's just, it's, you have, you can now have these different conversations with your sons who are watching. They're little. I mean, my, I mean, I'm not, we're, we're nearly the same. I mean, my, my daughter's eight, my son's six, my other son is almost four. And then uh, I have a one-year-old. So there's a lot at home. Yeah. We're done. So people always go, are you done? I'm like, oh, we're done. I'm sleeping on the couch. We're done. Uh, but, <laughs> it, but it's, uh, but in that situation, they're watching you and that it, that's, that's something you'll never have to miss out on, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, Man, I, it's it's almost surreal that I I have this opportunity, and we all have this opportunity here at Family First Life. And you know, it, like, I'm only going to get better every day, and so my results should reflect that. As long as I keep the same work ethic up, and um, you know, I'm going to be able to protect more families. That's the other great thing is, you know, not just the not just the free training the culture here that I don't want to speak on the culture here for, for a minute, if I can, it is, you know, I've worked a lot of places and, um, you know, th that is one of the first things, not just the success that I noticed that everybody was having here, but just the, the culture, the team environment, the, uh, support, um, from people I don't even know that reach out to me on social media and say, Hey, congratulations on that big sale or, or whatever. And, and, you know, I like to reciprocate that back. And, um, I think, you know, Sean and all of our top elite, you know, leaders here in the company have done a very, very good job of creating that culture and passing it down to throughout all the agencies. And, um, that's one of the things that, you know, I was also very attracted to you when I was starting here. And um, anyways, uh, as 
I forgot what I was saying. I started talking about the culture. <laughs> no, it's, I, but I, I would agree in the, regards to the culture. That's what attracted yeah. me here too, is when you, when I first, I mean, I was looking here back in the day, it wasn't a bunch of people showing off Maseratis and Rolexes. Yeah. It was people talking about congratulations to Joe and congratulations to Trey and these people that you did 10,000 in a week. And I'm like 10,000 in a week. What? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, unreal. It's unreal. Uh, oh, I remember, I remember. So I was going to say, you know, um, it, it's great that, you know, our, our results that we produce uh, are rewarded, right. You know, tremendously, but even better than that, you know, we're not just selling vacuums. We're not just selling toothbrushes or whatever you want to sell. We're selling life insurance. And, you know, I, I don't get it a lot, but every once in a while I'll, when I tell a client that they've been approved, you know, they'll like clap and jump up and sometimes they'll give me a hug. And it's just like, you know, cause they didn't think they were going to get covered or, or whatever. And, you know, just to see their excitement and um, just to see the relief that was lifted off of their shoulders because I was able to help get them life insurance. So they don't got to worry about that for their family in the future. And so, you know, it's, it's really, did I, did I wake, wake up, you know, out of high school thinking I was going to be a life insurance agent? No, I had no idea about this industry. I just kind of fell into it. Um, I kept an open mind, did my due diligence as far as researching it. And then I, I bet on myself and I followed the training. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm very, because I tried to start this life coaching business, I, I got into, you know, personal development. I never used to be into per personal development. So I think that's what's helped me a lot here get started with FFL is leading up to when I started here a couple months ago. Um, but I'm, I'm all about mindset and I'm telling you. Who are, you, who are your favorite three personal development coaches? Uh, Andy Frisella, Ed Milet, and um, she's my other one. I don't know. I don't, I, those, those are the two, two good ones to start. Yeah. Those I mean, are the two guys that really, yeah. um, you know, get me, get me motivated and excited. Rags to riches, yeah. man. Rags to riches, all mindset, hard work and guys who yep. uh, built, built tremendous businesses and, and um, came from nothing. And that's yeah. what's, uh, what's any, any one of us can do anything big. It just got to yeah. start and don't, not stop. So yep. Brent, thank you so much. I'd love any final, final thoughts, any challenges, any inspirational words you have for the new agents out there that are going, I'm, I'm here on dial day one, took a break. What it, what any, yeah. any dial day tips you want to give as we send these, send everyone off to, to, to crush the rest um, of the day. Yeah, some dial day tips that have helped me. Um, so I, I mostly buy uh, CRM, uh, instant internet leads. I buy some one month, I buy some three month old. From my personal opinion, you know, there's a saying all leads work and yeah, they will as long as you work them long enough. Um, but some take less to work. I, I've found in my experience, the instant ones, I, I, I have to less work less hard to really like make contact with them or set an appointment with them. Um, but all leads work, but I was gonna say the three month old, I've noticed like the phone number will change or um, they just don't answer. So um, there's a, a website, fastpeoplesearch.com. I always have that pulled up when I'm dialing because you know, either the phone number's wrong or the names, they change their name or whatever. And it's, it just helps me be more prepared for when they do pick up. Um, and then, yeah, just follow the script. That's all. I follow the script. I, I practice my tonality. Um, so I'm not overly excited. And I'm just kind of here, you know, sitting at a desk, hating life and trying to set an appointment. And, um, I, I, I have noticed, you know, the other cool thing, you guys, um, you'll see in the training, if you're new or, or, you know, thinking about starting is, um, you know, this, you'll hear a lot, this is a numbers game. And, you know, I, it is, it, it's a numbers game. If, if you're consistent, and you follow, follow the, the recipe that FFL training has provided for us and, and invest in your leads, do the phone dialing at least minimum 400, 400 dials a day is what I do minimum. Um, you'll get your, your 15 appointments for each of you know, the two run days. And so you can get your 30 appointments a week and you know, you, you'll get better 
you'll get better every day, every week, and you'll start closing more. And, you know, I'm only seven weeks in and I'm not closing probably as good as I, as I could be. And I'm already, I'm doing well. And so just follow the training um, and, and don't be cautious of your activity because I noticed one, you know, this last week or two weeks, I, um, you know, kids stuff, life got, got in the way of me dialing and I didn't, I didn't hit my 400 dials. And then I'm, I'm short a bunch of appointments and I'm short a bunch of closes and I'm short a bunch of deposits in my account. And I look back at all, all my um, stats and my numbers and it's because I didn't, my activity level sucked that week. And so, oh, the other thing you guys, um, you know, I thought I, I had a, a couple good runs or a couple good weeks. And, um, I spent a crap ton of money on, on leads, which is good. That's why I had a couple good weeks. Um, but I thought, you know, what? I have all these leads in my phone burner that I haven't been able to get, make contact. I'm, I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to really buy any leads. Maybe I'll buy a little bit is what I did. And I'm just going to reach back out to all these old contacts I had. And it, I, I did Bad not week. have, yeah, not it good. Was, it's a bad week. And I learned from that. And so even if I have a good week or a bad week, it's a numbers game. If you if you do the minimum dials, you'll set the minimum amount of appointments, you'll close and get better every week. And your deposits and your bank account is going to reflect that. And you're going to realize it's a numbers game and it's a consistency game. And as long as you do what the training and all the top producers are doing, and you have a good work ethic and you're not afraid to get kick it, kicked in the teeth and pick yourself back up and keep following the system, you'll be successful here. Let this be an example because I'm there's nothing special about me. I love it, bro. That's it, man. It's just it. Humility and hard work. And uh, humble and hungry, Sean says, is the shirts he wears uh, all over the internet. And Brent's uh, honored to meet you uh, face to face, honored to have you on and within the team and, and so excited to watch you continue to grow. Anyone who's uh, got a heart like you is someone who's is going to attract a lot of people to want to work with them. And, and when you can sell a lot, you can teach how to sell a lot. And that's what's exciting about this business. And um, does everyone have to recruit? No, by all means, go sell a bunch of insurance and, and live a simple <laughs> life. But if you want to create some leverage for yourself and build an agency, there's no better place in family first life. And Brent, you're a tremendous uh, example of what to be successful. You're drop a, uh, a BL in the comments below to show <laughs> Brett LeBlanc some love. And uh, Brent, have a wonderful day, man. Keep crushing it. Proud to have you on. Look forward to having you on in a few months and seeing how far you've come. So with that, everybody, make it a great day. Make it a great week. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.